Hey guys, welcome back to Artosis Cast. Today, we are going to be taking a look at a very popular player over here in the bottom left. We have Stork, and he is going to be going up against one of my favorite Terrans to watch right now. Definitely has a very aggressive style. This is Speed. You definitely notice uh, I've casted a, a fair amount of speed games lately. He's been ex extremely active. Obviously, he made it into ASL this season, as Stork did as well. Uh, but speed is really, really in grind mode. Like, he is playing all day, every day. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what he wants to pull out against Stork. Uh, if you don't know speed style in general, he is really, really aggressive. He had a great series against Snow. Uh, semi recently if you look on the channel that i think that you will definitely enjoy it was like a three game series uh as far as stork goes i mean he's still making it into asl obviously he's still playing quite well in fact i had a friend tell me that they think stork is in very very good shape right now so i have seen some stork games in the last couple weeks uh but definitely wanted to cast another one here just to see okay what is he what is he looking like in his ladder games at the moment so anyways uh it looks like we are on polypoid and, you know, obviously a standard four-player map. Uh, it'll take a little bit for anything to happen since nothing crazy here as far as the opening. So I would love to take this moment. Thank you so much for checking out Artosis Cast. Really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in each and every day. I appreciate the comments on videos, the likes on videos, of course, subscribing to the channel because did you know half of you listening to my voice right now are not subscribed? Isn't that crazy? Uh, so go ahead, hit that subscription button. Hopefully it'll help the, uh, the the YouTube to suggest you more often since there is a video every single day. I uh, hope you don't miss any. So thank you again, guys, so much for that. All right. Uh, so Stork right now, scouting to the north. Uh, is not going for a Zella. This is probably just one of these like three minute, 20 second Nexus builds. That's my guess. Uh, that's been very, very popular for Protoss lately. In fact, we've seen some Terrans start to try to find some counters to it because it is so uh, common right now. It's like extremely safe. Uh, not 100% safe. Like things can go wrong, but it's a very, very safe build. Uh, and a lot of Protosses have been doing it to get that expansion up very quickly, but also not really have any, any big clearing weaknesses in their play. Anyways, we have a Stork making his first Dragoon. We'll see if he starts the range upgrade. Over here on speed side, he did get a pretty fast factory. And he is doing a little bit of a box scout here. Not going for that end scout. Uh, and I mean, if you're not going to scout very early, like 13 supply, then you basically need to do this. Like end scout uh, that's later than that, you definitely... It, it's just not as good, right? <laughs> Uh, anyways, the, the, in the, the reason behind that guys would be, uh, if you end scout and you scouted after 13, you won't find, uh, Nexus first in the second scouted location before you have to choose to start your third depot or not. So that's kind of the big thing. So anyways, uh, we have right now the command center about ready to go down the Nexus as well. You can see it's a little bit later than what I was alluding to. And this is because he has started that range upgrade. Uh, so yeah, Stork kind of going forward with range first, which will give him like a few more options. You know, you can put pressure on a little bit more uh, consistently with that. Without range. I mean, Dragoons don't do that much without range, honestly. <laughs> uh, Marine Vulture can actually counter them pretty hard. So you, you really kind of need like a bunker, for instance. Now, he hasn't been able to get up there. Speed hasn't. So I'm wondering, like we noticed that he hasn't actually made a bunker yet. But because this Dragoon is sitting back very defensively and see how he keeps checking it, he doesn't necessarily need it. Instead, he's keeping some units on the high ground so he can come down and flank into a Dragoon, right? So he gets the first volleys. It makes a big difference. But that being said, if Stork here just goes across the map kind of randomly now that he has two Dragoons, things could go very haywire for speed. And in fact, look at that. He has just a complete understanding of the situation throws the bunker down realizing like okay we just don't know like he might be going range and if two dragoons walk across the map with range and i have four marines and a vulture i lose <laughs> you'll those two dragoons will kill everything and start killing scvs and more dragoons will rally in and things will get really really bad then looking at the main base here of stork he is going into a robotics second gateway is on the way so probably two gate observer that's very very popular at the moment 
but we'll see if he goes into Reaver third or third Reaver or some other build. Because that's kind of like the stuff that we, we normally see at the moment in the current metagame. So second factory coming up. I love the second factory here uh, for speed. I actually think like my my guess for the evolution, and I feel like it's already happening, but my guess for the evolution of Terran versus Protoss is you're going to see the second factory before armory like so much. Um, it's already like something that you see sometimes, but like I think upgrade Terran is not what it used to be. Uh, Protosses have gotten so good at dealing with it. And honestly, adding your second factory quickly and just keeping closer in supply is a very important and powerful thing to do against Protoss. Now, taking a look, we have a few mines out there by speed, right? Watching for an, any expansions that could occur. Just scouting around the map with the Vulture as well. You know, getting a little bit of intel. He did lay some additional mines here. You can see a couple in the way there to maybe catch a DT. This one kind of spotting this base, kind of spotting like if a shuttle comes over as well. Observer, of course, helping him to clear the mines and take this third base location. And speed actually walking out into an interesting location. Now, if this observer does not see the army, which in fact it does not, this army gets past, this can actually turn really crazy really quickly. Okay, like first off, he might come back and catch these goons. I think he is actually. Oh, dude, Stork is in a lot of trouble already. This is very dangerous. Look at that, blocks the ramp. So two goons die dealing almost zero damage. And he's on two factory. Siege mode almost done here. Stork does not have that much. He's on two gate observer, which is fine and normally will hold easily. But when you lose two goons for free, a build like this suddenly has opportunities. Now we have a couple vultures with that speed upgrade, of course, running around, laying some mines here against this one dragoon on the high ground. And we'll continue to do that, fighting up the ramp even. Excuse me, the rest of the dragoons come up to flank that. And this gives him an opportunity for speed to move up to the high ground. So he sacrificed two vultures to get these dragoons out of position. And like, I mean, it, it worked, right? He's on that high ground. This is going to be a little bit annoying for Stork, but Stork has, well, if he brings this dragoon down, eight goons. And eight goons are good at fighting against this type of push. But unfortunately, he loses two without really getting anything done. Now, this is a very strong position for speed. Uh, he is continuing to throw some damage down onto this Nexus. It looks like he should be able to kill it off all the way. In the meantime, Stork is going up into his Reaver tech, adding additional gateways as well. And in fact, he's going up to six gate Reaver that I've talked about a lot. Well, I've talked about four gate Reaver a lot. How you take a third base and you go four gate Reaver and you're kind of just, that's like the very good middle ground. I'm safe against everything. Here with the six gate, this is more of uh, an aggressive play or a, I must bust this push type of play. Honestly, looking at this with the comm stats finishing, I feel like if you scan and see the amount of gateways, you simply take your third and turtle and you're in a fantastic position of speed. Because Stork has all these gateways. He wants to make a bunch of units. And if you're just sitting back, like if you're trying to attack into that, okay, Stork's going to get value. If you just sit back and expand, it's like, yeah, everything for Stork is kind of off, right? Well, there are four factories right now. Throwing down some uh, turrets. Feels like he is like he's turtling a bit he's bringing his units into his main base uh but maybe doesn't realize that in fact stork is not just producing out of this obviously you know you can't tell if gateways are making when you scan them you just you can't tell at all right like they don't blink or anything like that they don't do any sort of movement or graphical response uh so he may just think like oh i just have to turtle here right and in fact He's going up towards more upgrades. And like, here's the thing. What I want to see, and like, obviously I can see the whole map, but if speed threw down his third command center, that's the best move. Okay, there it is. There it is. So it looks like he's just kind of like steady macroing, maybe getting towards upgrades and then throwing down the third command. And honestly, third command, produce units, maybe add two factories. And like everything about speed's play is very, very strong. We'll see if that's what he ends up on. Uh, he is actually making a drop ship. That's a very interesting drop ship. Not something I expected to see at this point in the game. 2 1 upgrades have been started here for speed as well. Stork 
across the map. He does have his plus one on the way. Has a shuttle out. A couple Reavers over here just kind of defending that fourth base location while it's being taken. And... Well... Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like they're just in this massing phase where no one can really attack each other. Like, okay, we have that little run in and he sees that Stork has all these units out here. Honestly, like, look here, right? This turret stopped anything from flying in, so the closest observer is there. Nothing here vision-wise. So he has no defense against this upcoming drop. Now, this is an odd drop timing anyways. Like, you do not expect to hit a drop right now. Uh, as Protoss. It's pretty uncommon, but Terrans have been mixing things like this in a little bit more lately, maybe because of that uncommonness of it. Now, he goes ahead, gets some big volleys right there, killing off a few probes. Okay, little mind drag there. Honestly, this was a very good drop. He killed a lot of probes there overall. Look at this. 48 probes only while Stork is trying to get up to another base. Everything looking pretty good for speed. He is still getting those 2-1 upgrades. He still just has four factories. So actually, the most important thing right now for speed is to just make sure he does not take damage. And in fact, he's still harassing very well. Look at that. Another four or five probes going down. Can he save the tank? I don't think so, right? Like, he's got to lose that. Okay, he does end up losing it, but definitely, definitely worth. Now, at this point, if he just, like, really reinforces adds factories... It is a beautiful position here for speed. Stork rallying out into the map a little bit. Has a fair amount of zealots. Okay, he's getting into some storm. So that can actually make the game uh, prolong a bit, even though it does feel like uh, Stork is fairly far behind. A couple speed vultures up here, slowing everything down. Speed, he's got his turrets up. Adding on a beautiful amount of factories. So seven factories is very, very clean macro on three bases. It allows you to build into a fourth base pretty easily. Doesn't really lock your minerals down into like a timing attack. And in fact, he's he's got definitely a bit of a bank here. There is a supply block going on. Adding a couple depots now is uh, speed and losing a few units in there as well while he reduces that probe count once again to m below 50. So some, some pretty big pickoffs there. Ooh, not the greatest micro. <laughs> Maybe could have gotten one more probe. Uh, but yeah, that vulture does end up falling. And yeah, it just feels like speed has a, a great position here. I think that Stork this game, it is going to come down really heavily to how well he manages his shuttles and his storms. Because he's going to have to gain some value back, basically, right? Like you can't you can't have the game open this poorly and and like lose your third lose all those probes and everything and be in a good position without getting a little bit of counter harassment yourself now the drop bombs over the turrets uh he kills a tank he's killing some some turrets here but honestly this was not that effective for two shuttles full of units doesn't feel particularly good notice how he's very quickly getting out here sometimes protoss players pair that with sending an army in when you send units back to clear it now, unfortunately, Stork, you know, he doesn't really have a big enough army to do that with. And he didn't get that much damage. So that double bomb in against an already kind of turtled three base player probably wasn't too likely to get a lot of damage done. I feel like that was maybe not the greatest thing for Stork to do right there. Uh, but you know what? He's still making out some shuttles, getting some high Templars in there now. I don't think we're going to see any more Reavers this game, honestly. The economy just isn't there for Stork. A little bit of a Vulture harassment. The Vultures come up and start to harass quite heavily, actually, uh, on these probes. Yeah, I guess some good solid kills. Looks like the uh, they will be picked off. And once again, kind of a low probe count. Stork having a hard time keeping his economy together. Oh... Looks like I may have missed a little bit of a storm drop. Definitely some SCVs died, right? Like, I'm pretty sure he was in the 60s, so a little bit of damage. But honestly, it's okay right now. He's on three bases. 56 SCVs is pretty good. He's got really, really great production right now. Eight factories going, two one upgrades. Speed pushing out. This could be a killing blow. Now, one thing to mention is it's not very Goliath heavy, so the shuttle could have some some good impact here right it's just two goliaths so that's going to take four volleys from these two goliaths to kill the shuttle 
Uh, we'll see what he gets done with it. Now, High Templar comes out, does throw down a storm, but yeah, has to get picked up. Doesn't have the greatest storm. Another storm goes down. Stork just kind of sitting here, right? And this is this is like a very important moment in a game, right? It's like, will Stork save this base? Does he rush down the ramp into this? How far do you push forward? Well, right now, Speed is doing a really good job of pushing just a little bit and becoming annoying enough where Stork is going to think, gosh, maybe I need to go down there and clear this myself as opposed to wait for him to come closer to me. Some storms go down. The, the actually pretty reasonable storms we can see. Dropping a few units off, trying to draw some uh, splash damage with those Zealot Bombs. Stork pulling his probes away from this base. Stork, I like that he's deciding not to attack down. I feel like if he attacked down, the cost, the trade would be so inefficient. That would be very, very bad uh, here for, uh, for Stork. Speed still with a great spread going after this Nexus, but some storms are reducing that seed chain count. So he's buying time. Still making some probes off there. He did send the probes up to this base, so still mining from four bases. Not for too, too long. Speed expanding behind this. Since he's decided to expand here, he really needs to hold this area because if he loses this area, it'll be a very quick move for Stork to go down and maybe eliminate this area. Now, that being said, quite a few units actually sent down here. This is surprising. Definitely, there's like no attack or anything. He's going to... Looks like he's just going to mine up. Okay, he's going to bring the units out now. Maybe he was thinking, oh gosh, this is the one moment damage could be dealt here. So he goes into a defensive play, but wasn't the case. Stork was not going after that base. Now, once again, trying to push into this high ground a bit. Ooh, probe gets picked off as Stork sends units to the top left. Looks like he wants to take another main. Speed, though, doing a great job kind of keeping Stork boxed in. Moving up the map. This is a very small portion of Stork's army. Just 11 Dragoons here. Might end up getting caught. Yeah, he's actually trapping a lot of these units right now. That means this base might be forfeit as well. Another group of Dragoons coming down. Stork needs to bring his whole army together if he wants to have any chance at defeating this army. Don't forget, we do have a chunk of army still over here. Like several chunks, in fact. So this is not like the full supply of speed. Maybe it's something to be wiped. No. Looks like not. All those Dragoons that came up from the top left get splattered by these Siege Tanks. And I got to tell you what, this was a very well played, very cleanly played game from Speed. Uh, maybe not showing Stork's best sides, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that was, that was the game. Uh, GG, guys, and thanks for watching.